Hi, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a website called gmathacks.com and I've written several GMAT textbooks including Total GMAT Math, which is a comprehensive overview of the math content on the GMAT. And what I want to talk to you about today in this short video is the relationship between a square and a circle. One thing that GMAT loves to do is put multiple figures in the same question. I've recorded another video you can check out about the relationship between a circle and an equilateral triangle, which is actually a little more complicated, but the square and the circle is more common on the test. This is something you should have automatic in your toolbox, understanding the relationship between the measurements, the characteristics of a square, and the measurements and characteristics of a circle. Now I've drawn here, we have a square inscribed in a circle, and we have a circle inscribed in a square. Before we start looking at specific techniques in these two scenarios, the one thing you should understand is that a square and a circle, along with an equilateral triangle, are figures that really only have one characteristic. We can talk about it in multiple ways. You can talk about the area of a circle, or the circumference of a circle, or the diameter, or the radius, but really, if you know one, you know them all. If you know the radius, you double it, you get the diameter. If you know the radius, you can apply a formula to get the circumference, apply a formula to get the area. Same thing with a square. If you know one side, you can get the perimeter, you can get the area, you can calculate the length of the diagonal from one corner to the opposite corner. So the reason why that's relevant today is that if you know one thing about either the square or the circle, you can figure out all those relationships. So the key is just one step in each of these diagrams. What's one connection between the square and the circle that it's inscribed in? So let's start over here on the left. We have a square inscribed in a circle. The easy way to relate these two figures is to draw the diagonal. That's the diagonal of the square from one corner to the other, and it is the diameter of the circle. So already, based on what I just said, you should be able to relate everything in the circle to everything in the square. The diagonal has a predictable relationship to every other aspect of the square. The diameter has a predictable relationship to every other aspect of the circle. So the one thing that's a little bit complicated is relating every part of the square to the diagonal. And that's where we have to go back to a little geometry and some information about triangles. So notice that when we draw a diagonal through the square, we're creating a triangle right here. It's a right triangle because this angle here is part of a square. It's a 90 degree angle. And because we're splitting these two other angles, these two angles are 45 degrees. So we have an isosceles right triangle, a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and what that means is that if these two lengths are S, just for a side of the square, then this is S times root 2. So the measure of a side of the square times the square root of 2. Now we know square root of 2 is the diameter. So diameter of the circle is side times root 2. There's a lot more algebra you could do if you wanted to figure out the length of a, uh, the, uh, the diameter of the circle in terms of the length of a side, the area of the square in terms of the radius. All those things are just algebra. As far as the geometry is concerned, you just need this one relationship. The diameter is the same as the diagonal of the square, which is the side times root 2. Everything else flows naturally from that. So that leads us to the other diagram I have up here, a square that circumscribes a circle, or a circle inscribed in a square. This one is more simple. So let's draw a diameter across the circle. Notice that this is not only, again, the diameter of the circle, but is the length of one side. So it's the diameter, but it's the same length from here to here as the length of this side down here. So in this case, the diameter of the circle is equal to a side of the square. So if you want to figure out the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square, the perimeter of the square to the perimeter of the circle, anything you want to do, you know these two are the same. You can substitute them for each other in equations. You can figure out any of those relationships that you want to figure out. 
One thing that the GMAT might throw at you just to be prepared for it is combining these two things. So here we have a circle inside a square. Here we have a circle outside a square. I've seen sample questions where a circle is inscribed in a square, which is itself inscribed in a circle. And you're asked, what's the ratio between the diameter of the inner circle to the diameter of the outer circle? It sounds pretty daunting. There are a lot of steps involved, but from here, you can figure out the relationship of this circle to the re relationship of the square. From here, you can figure out the relationship of this square to the relationship of, of the bigger circle. And with the commonality of that inner square, you can relate all those things together. Again, because a circle or a square, they really only have that one dimension that matters. So once you've made that single connection, that's all it takes. And usually, as we've seen, that connection happens through the diameter, whether the square is inscribed in the circle or the circle is inscribed in the square. That's all I have for you about the relationship between a square and a circle. For more geometry tips, you can check out gmathacks.com or my book, Total GMAT Math.